Hey everyone, my name is Jessie Jennings and welcome back to our 2023 new product showcase. All of this week we've been telling you all about our new products and formulas from folk art to um, drizzle, surfaces, let's paint. We've been talking about everything this week. So make sure to check out all the sessions from the past two days um, in our session this morning where we talked about our brand new folk art colors as well as some folk art glow products. So this afternoon, we have a really fun session. We have Dylan Estes in the studio, and he's gonna be telling us a little bit about Drizzle. We have some brand new colors this year, as well as really fun new tools. So stick around, because Dylan's gonna be doing some demonstrating later on, and that's gonna be really fun to watch. Um, don't forget, we have a sale going on on platonline.com. So if you go to platonline.com slash new, you can see all of our new products there. And if you purchase $70 or more, you get 30% off. So if you're thinking about trying out some of these new products you've been talking about, make sure to check out that sale because now's a really great time to get that. Also for each session, if you comment in the comments below, make sure to let us know where you're from, ask questions, um, tell us if you've used this product before. We'd love to hear from you but I'll also be choosing a winner during each session to receive a bundle of our brand new products that we're talking about this week. So make sure to participate in the chat so I, you have a chance for me to pick your name. Um, so now I'm gonna pass it over to Dylan so he can tell us a little bit about our brand new Drizzle products. All right, hey everyone, I'm Dylan Estes. I'm a content creator here at Plaid and I'm really excited. We haven't talked about folk art Drizzle in a minute and we came out with this product last year and it's really exciting to have a bunch of new stuff to show, uh, to show you for this session. So we have a bunch of new paint formulas. We have a bunch of new tools. Short answer is we got a lot to talk about, okay? So we have six new additions to our um, flash iridescent part of our paint line. We've got four new glitters and we have two new metallic paints. So um, if you don't know already, Drizzle is an all-inclusive um, paint pouring line. So we have every kind of paint that you want. We've got special effect paint. We have our basic colors. We have a lot of different tools that are already in the line and everything mixed together helps you succeed in paint pouring. We've seen paint pouring explode over the last few years and that's why we made Drizzle. Drizzle is a one-step process. A lot of times in paint pouring you have to mix a, an acrylic paint with a pouring medium to make a um, flowing paint formula, but we have done all of that here. And we've put it in these great little bottles. They have awesome little screw top caps that flip open that you can pour right onto your canvas. You don't need an extra cup unless you're doing a special technique. And we've really optimized this for the crafter. So whether you are just getting started or you're a professional artist, this is a um, glossy finish um, all in one product okay so we love to use this for so many so many different kinds of projects and I've got a lot of canvases up here and we're going to show you a few different canvases today but you can also use drizzle on a lot of different surfaces it's indoor outdoor so you can put it outside on your patio um, we've done a lot of pots um, flower pots and home decor all kinds of different home decor like 3d objects so uh, the sky's the limit with Drizzle, and we joke all the time because it's kind of corny when we say there's no rules and it's all about color, but that's really the truth. This is a really cool line, and we've made it as simple as we could for you um, to get started. And it's water-based, non-toxic, and it's great for any person to use, whether you're just beginning or, like I said, if you do this for a living, if you make pouring art for a living. So I want to get started with all the different colors that we have, and we're going to go ahead and go overhead, and we're going to walk through all of the different formulas. So one of the first products we have here is our Flash Iridescent. Now these are beautiful, beautiful paints because they are actually shifting in changing light. So you can kind of see it's almost like a pearl, but there's actually a different color reflected here. So this color is um, tidal, tidal Wave Flash. So you can see these are all called flash iridescents because when you have them in shining light, you flash to a different color. So this one starts as kind of a greenish teal and then it flashes this really pretty ocean blue. All right. Everyone's really excited, Dylan. A couple quick comments. Um, Paula Kinsavage loves your shirt. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Paula. <laughs> um, we have Kayla who said that she loves drizzle paints. Um, she loves the bright colors and she said she especially loves the flash ones because she's uh, made some really stunning pieces. I agree, thank you for the compliments you guys and the comments. These are amazing paints and we've stood by them for the last few years and um, they're gonna continue to be exciting. You know, We've had a lot of opportunities to expand the line so the more you guys purchase these new tools and tell us what you wanna see in the line too, the more we can bring it to you. 
Um, okay, so our next color here is going to be denim flash. This one's really cool because it almost has a denim color. That's why we named it. And then it flashes to this lavender purple. That's really, really pretty. pretty. And just to be clear, really quick, you've mixed these with other colors so you can see the contrast, right? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. um, specify that. So the majority of these canvases that I'm showing you are these new colors. And then we mixed in some of the existing colors. So we're going to use some of the existing colors later on. I'm going to do a few demos of some of our new tools. We're going to use some old and some new, okay? So yes, that's a good point to make. This one actually uses um, some of our existing glitter and our ocean uh, navy blue there. Pretty. So you can so, mix yeah, these where it's with shifting, all that is the brand new one. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Okay. Our next one is going to be Lucky Flash. So this is kind of a true classic green color. This one's really pretty because it almost goes to a gold. <clears throat> and this one has so much movement in it. You know, we pack these paints with a ton of metallic pigments. And that's what gives it this iridescence. And you can almost see it, fig like the figuring almost moves mm. when you move these paintings. So that's why these are so good for um, gallery art. You know, if you have something painted uh, and hanging on the wall, you're able to show your color. And then once you move around it, you see all kinds of different things in the image, which makes for a really interesting piece. There's Lucky Flash. Then, whoop, then we've got our Lemon Flash. This one's really cool because it incorporates almost a pinky, pinky orange tone to it. So you I love can that see one. the majority there is this nice pale, almost home decor yellow color. You know, yellow, we have another yellow in the line that's more of a neon yellow, but this one you could almost use as um, a neutral if you wanted yeah, to pour pretty. with like browns and beiges and whites. So that one's got a really pretty subtle pink flash. And then we have apple, candy apple flash. So this is your classic red color. And this one flashes to almost like a magenta pink. Isn't that pretty? And then we've yeah, mixed this beautiful. with our lava and our neon sunshine, the yellow color. That looks great. Yeah. You can really see too with these um, iridescent flash uh, pigments how smooth the canvas is. Right, yes. I we are so that. proud to bring you a product that is self-sealing. You know, that's another thing in the um, paint pouring community, oftentimes an added step is to pour a finish over your painting, which is still, you know, drizzle's great for finishing. You can put all kinds of different finishes. We offer aerosol finishes in our um, different lines. We've got a great Mod Podge finish, but these have a really pretty glossy finish already. You can see all the light reflecting off of there, and that's the whole point. You know, we want people to be able to pour their paint on their project, swirl it around, and then let it dry and display it. You know, we don't want to add any additional steps to the process, and that's why we've built everything you need into this formula. The pouring medium, the paint, the specialty aspect with those beautiful iridescent pigments, and the finish. It's all wrapped up in one. This one here is Onyx Flash. So this one is a dark black, and then it goes to almost a gold, kind of a bronzy gold. Okay, so those are uh, our six new flash iridescents. And then I want to show you two additional canvases that we've got here. I think I put these aside. Ah, yes, okay. So we've got our bronze flash here, or sorry, brassy. And this is another one where you can see a lot of figuring. And this one is a metallic. This is just a standard metallic. So you don't necessarily have any kind of iridescent shift, but you have that beautiful shimmering metallic pigment suspended in that base. I love that. It's almost like a champagne. Yeah, yeah. And then the second one we've added, you know, and I want to touch on this, you know, we have a lot of great metallics already in the line. We've got a gold, a silver, a white, and a copper color. So these are great additions to it. So don't think that these are the only metallics, and we'll get into those a little bit later too. And then this one is our mercury mm. metallic. So this is that gunmetal gray color. And that is just a beautiful kind of deep silver. So if you were to do an all silver palette, you could do our white <coughs> cloud nine metallic with our silver and then add this beautiful new color to the mix. I love that. Okay. Now this is probably my favorite part of the new products. These uh, products that I'm about to show you 
are an extension of our glitters. Now, this is really innovative. Plaid really prides ourselves on being innovative in the industry, and pouring paint is one thing. We know how to do that. We were able to formulate that. But one thing that we saw a need for in the artist community was to be able to pour with glitter, liquid glitter. How do we do that? So we saw a great opportunity with the drizzle line. And what we've done is we've formulated uh, three existing glitters in the line now, and we've added a brand new one. So we had a gold, we had a black and copper flash, and then we had a sugary um, pastel. And these are four new colors added to that because we saw such a great um, reaction to those. So we were really excited to add in some new glitters. And on top of that, um, three of these are really, really chunky glitters. So I'm gonna show you first the comparison between our existing glitter and our brand new ones. So I've got a canvas here that has some of our existing glitter in it. You can see it right when I turn the light. You've got just a tiny little vein mm. here. And this is mixed with our navy and our white color. And you can see that glitter. It's very fine glitter. And it just flows right into the paint. And you can see here, this is actually a clear base. So you know most of our drizzle paints are opaque. You know They're paint. But the glitter, we wanted to come up with a way to be able to pour with liquid glitter. So what we did is we suspended this fine glitter in a completely clear base so that when you did pour, it would blend right into your colors and almost kind of be a subtle glitter there. You can also pour it really heavy and get really thick veins, but it's really versatile that way. So there's no colored base under there to limit you. So you can use this glitter in any color combination. It really reminds you of like a geode, the way all that swirls together. Absolutely, yeah. And these are perfect for making geodes. I don't even have to tell you where the glitter is on this one. This one <laughs> is there huge. There it is. And it is flashy. And this is our brand new gypsy gold glitter color. <laughs> so you may see some of our other products here at Plaid. We pride ourselves on making all kinds of amazing glitter products. And this is just another one. So we've got at least five or six different glitter particle sizes in here. We've got hexagons, we've got tiny little specks of our fine glitter, we've got our standard sized glitter. Oh, and again, yeah. this is in that clear base. So we just poured this along with a few of our other colors. This is a flashy iridescent and then our gold metallic. And that glitter just flows in perfectly. Diane said, oh my, that has my name all over it. I am the Glitz Queen. Oh yeah, we know <laughs> we've got some glitter fans in our, in our craft world. So we're here for you. Okay, that's our gold. Then our silver is called Disco Dust. Pretty good name for that, especially with the new Barbie movie coming out. Great name. So again, you've got these really large particles of glitter. And they're not just, you know, sil I probably don't have to explain glitter to the craft community, but <laughs> um, you know, glitter is not just a single color. Oftentimes you can buy like a multi-chrome silver or a multi-chrome gold or just a standard reflective silver or silver and gold. And what we've done is mixed them all together. So you can see some particles that are colorful and holographic and just those you know, reflective uh, metallic particles. So we've kind of built every kind of glitter into here. And again, you just use it just like any other of our um, folk art drizzle paints. And Dylan's right, having so many different size and shape particles really is such a benefit with glitter because it just grabs that light and catches it and reflects it in so many different directions and it just looks so much more sparkly than when it's all just one size. Yeah, it's just so much more fun that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, if you work with glitter uh, when you're crafting, you, you know that no matter what happens, it's gonna be a mess. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, we have pr pride ourselves on our no mess formulas. So we have great formulas in our folk art line, um, folk art glitterific. There's a lot of different iterations of that. We've been able to expand that by crazy numbers. And this is another one of those. So when you pour with our folk art drizzle glitters, it's all contained in that base. So you're not gonna have glitter flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be loose. You don't have to sprinkle anything and get it all over your hands because Jesse and I both know if you even like walk 10 feet away from a glitter project, your hands will be covered in glitter. Everything will be covered in glitter. But not with this. These are great new formulas. So this one is our rosy gold. And then we've got one more. This one's really pretty. This one is a pastel. This one is called Opal Crush. So this one is kind of um, hard to tell what's in here because you do start out with a milky base when you pour with the glitter, and then the milky base dries clear. But thankfully, we've got this sample here. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. I'm going to get this really close up. 
This is almost like a pastel holographic. We have another one in the line that almost goes kind of bluish, bluish purple. And this one goes more bluey green. And again, you have those larger particles. So with our studio lights, it's kind of hard to see because we're kind of washing it out here. But trust me, this is a really, really pretty color as well. Okay, so that is all of our new line extensions. We've got so many cool new colors to add to the line. And if you haven't already, go to platonline.com slash new. You'll find all these new colors and these new tools, and you'll be able to see our drizzle page um, to see all the existing colors. And we have a huge line. We have every color you can think of. And we also encourage you to mix colors. So we have a lot for you to work with and check out on there. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is all of our new tools. So we have a lot of different new tools that we're really excited to bring to you. Um, we had about uh, a handful of tools that came out in the original line. They were based off tools that we saw people wanting a need for, you know, techniques that people wanted to create but were having to make a tool themselves. So we brought those out and this is the exact same thing. We are bringing brand new tools to the line that we've seen people kind of coming up with home devices for. And we thought, you know, we'll go straight to the manufacturers and we'll figure out how to make these tools so that people don't have to search around their house for some crazy gadget to make this work. So the first one I want to talk about is our brand new um, paint blasters. So we're going to talk through all of, our, whoop, all of our different tools here. And we've got a lot on our table here. So I'm going to move some of this stuff off. And our first one here are paint blasters. Caitlin's going to help me out here. That name is extremely intriguing, I have I know, to say. I know, and we got a big canvas. we got a big <laughs> wow moment here. So uh, this is really cool. We can go back overhead, and I'll show you how this tool works. So this is basically a little plunger syringe, and they're really, really cool. They're easy to clean. They're plastic and foam. And what you do is you pour your paint into a um, little cup, and then you can just suction up the paint, and then you squirt it across your canvas. So these are really fun. Jesse and I have both used these for all kinds of different projects, and you get a really unique look. I'll bring this overhead too. They so truly are as fun as they sound. It's like yeah. a water gun with paint. Right, exactly. And you know, you might think, well, I'll just get a water gun and I'll put paint in it. But that's the whole thing. We have gone through all kinds of different um, tools that could to could do this job, and we found that none other worked than the one that we developed custom for this line. So this one is really, really great. It's easy to clean. All you have to do to change colors is suck up some water with it and then squirt the water out and you'll get clean water. And as soon as you've got that, you can suck up a different color and then just keep going at it. And Folk Art Drizzle is really beautiful because we like to say that it doesn't, it doesn't muddy, but it does blend. So this is a really, really cool um, way to get some blended colors. You can see we used about five different colors on this canvas and we did them all in one, one sitting. This was not a matter of doing one color and going and waiting and coming back later when it was dry. This was all at once. So you have some colors that have stayed very nice and um, separated. Up here you've got some cool drips, but then you've got colors down here that once you get to the bottom you've got all this beautiful blending. But as you can see here, you don't have any brown. That's a big deal. We have worked really hard to formulate this paint to make sure that it doesn't turn brown when you mix it. Because if you were to take our regular folk art acrylic paint and mix a few colors on a canvas and try and swirl it around, A, it wouldn't flow because our folk art acrylic is really thick and creamy. B, when it, if you did get it to mix or if you did take a brush to it, it would eventually just kind of muddy together because those paints are made to work on layers and brush out really thin. But what we've done with this formula is we've made sure that we have a great base in it that allows those colors to stay separate when you want and then blend beautifully when you want. Okay, so those are our paint blasters. And I just want to mention that you, cut, you get a set of two and that's basically all you need. I would, I would say if you're doing more than two colors, it's awesome to have an extra set on hand just so you don't have to change colors as often. But these are awesome to, to grab for this kind of project. We have a question about the blasters, Dylan. Okay. Brenda asked, um, will the glitter drizzle work in the blaster? Yeah, absolutely. So those, um, the holes on the end of the blasters, they are nice and large, so you can absolutely get the glitter in and out of there, no problem. Great, thanks. Yeah, good, good question. Okay, this is really cool. So we have seen a big trend with swinging paint, 
Um, I'm going to hold this back here so you can see it because um, our table is <laughs> not big enough. Um, but we have seen a big trend where people are fashioning their own kind of pendulum and filling up cups with paint and then swinging them around their canvases. And what we decided to do was come up with some way to make a tool that would do that. And what we came to was this great, ooh, I'm all over the place today. We're going to put these down. There's so much to share. Okay, <laughs> so what we decided to come up with was a really cool modular system. This is all, it comes in, in pieces, very easy to assemble. And this you can do up to an 18 by 24 canvas. We saw a lot of people on TikTok and Instagram Reels where they are crafting all kinds of different canvases and sizes with their own homemade pendulums. But we realized that the everyday crafter is not going to have um, a giant room in their house where they can suspend a chain from the ceiling <laughs> and do have a paint bucket swinging around, okay? And you probably don't have interest in doing a canvas that big. So what we decided was what is the biggest canvas that people will want to do and then let's make a project or let's make a product that somebody can do this at home very easily. And one thing that we added was something really cool. We'll go overhead again and I want to show you these different cups. So usually when you see people doing the pendulum painting, they have a cup with a single hole or they have a bucket or some kind of device that holds their paint. What we saw an opportunity for was some innovation of making different sized cups and different kinds of chambers. So not only could you put a single cup with a single color on your canvas, you could actually fill three or five. <laughs> so we thought that would be a really cool thing to help your creativity and we've loved the results so far. So these are simple. They fit right down in this little slot and you can change them out really simply. And what we recommend is that you put a piece of tape, any kind of masking tape. Folk Art makes a great little gray masking tape that you can just place over your holes to keep them closed while you're filling. And then just take your paint bottles, fill them right up, fill them all, all the way up to the top. We find that the, the more mass of paint you have in your cup, the better it swings. And then you just release that tape, and then you watch this guy fly around. And then you create these beautiful patterns. I've got another example right here. This is one where I used that five slot cup, and we got five different colors here. So all at once, this is just a plain, basic white canvas that we've now turned into to this amazing spin art. And it's super simple and quick. You put together your pendulum, and you're ready to paint. This is a really, really fun new tool for us at Plaid, and we want to see what you guys can create with it because it's very exciting. It's like the modern version of like the Spirograph from the 90s. Yes. You know one of those when you were little? Yeah. <laughs> That's it's so just fun. a really, really fun project to work with. While we're getting the next one, I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of another cool object that we've got for you. I'm going to actually push my seat back because I want to be able to show you this. This is our brand new splash guard. <laughs> so um, you might be thinking, uh, this looks really messy. I don't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> and I totally understand. But um, we fixed that for you. So we have designed this great place to do all of your projects in. And we call it our splash guard. So this is an awesome giant splash guard that you can do all kinds of drizzle projects in. It folds up really easily back into shape. You just pop it back together and you're able to do all kinds of different techniques. So we use our spinner. So this is the drizzle spinner. This is one of the original tools that came out with the line. And you're able to expand that um, splash guard, pop the spinner in, and then anything you spin, the paint will be um, spun onto the splash guard, and then you can easily clean it up with soap and water. It even has a little spout on the side. What I like to do is fill it up. I'm going to go overhead again. So I like to just fill it up with soapy water and then scrub it and then just get it filled up above this line with water and then you can just dump this out. So it's really, really simple to work with and it's really fun and again, it makes it really easy to do giant projects or really messy projects like using our spinner because we love to use this spinner because it's a great workstation to do all of your projects. And, you know, as, as you know, if you've done any kind of painting, paint's going to get places and drizzle is permanent. So the more we can prevent it from ruining any of your spaces or, you know, we know that we work 
in great big studios and we have a lot of resources to keep things clean but we know that when you're crafting at home you don't necessarily have a bunch of space or time or energy to keep everything clean all the time so that's what we want to do we just want you to be able to unfurl this thing get your um, spinner down in there and then start painting and when you're done you can fold it right back up and it's like nothing ever happened love that Dylan, everyone's saying that their carts are full with Drizzle product for the sale. Heck yeah. Okay, yeah. And I want to remind you guys, we've got 30% off $70 or more on platonline.com. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty big sale. We run a lot of sales, but this is a special one. So yeah. we want you to visit that. Not right now. We want you to keep watching. <laughs> but eventually, get over to platonline.com. We're probably not going to have this stuff in stock much longer. We're obviously going to reboot. But, you know, with this big push of new product, we've got, we're talking to a lot of people about a lot of things. And I would say get these things in your cart now because they're not necessarily going to be around tomorrow. Okay. Agreed. This is a great time to buy these tools, guys, because that is a really big discount. So make sure to take advantage of that sale. Absolutely. Okay, we're ready for our next one. So this is really cool. This is our three-piece strainer set. So in here, you get three of these great grooved plastic strainers. And then, Caitlin, would you actually pass me that little bin down there? So you get three different sets and you've got a lot of different options to pour with. And I'm gonna show you these out of the box. These are really fun to play with. So we see a trend often in paint pouring where people have um, taken cups and cut little slices in them and then they set them down on their projects and they pour paint and then they lift them or they have all of their um, paint falling out of the sides. And what we decided was why have to you know, we don't want you to have to make that. So we came up with the designs that we thought people would like the most. We put a lot of time and energy into designing these. And now we have these awesome little strainers. So we have some strainers in the line already. And we thought that we could really expand on these because there's so many shapes to get to. It will probably come out with even more. Um, so we've got this little infinity. We've got the four circle and the three circle. So the infinity is probably my favorite. This is an example of the infinity and we've used a lot of different beautiful colors here. We've got our neon pop, that beautiful pink and um, our great little pastel orange and our purple, that royal purple. And literally all you do, place these on a blank canvas and you're just gonna pour, 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 pour. And you just keep cycling through your colors. And again, our bottles are really easy to use. They've got these little caps, so you can just pour right out of the bottle. You don't have to pour it into it, another cup or anything like that. And then you automatically get this pattern. And then all you do to stretch it out, you can see it's a little warped, you just um, swirl your canvas a little bit. You can see how glossy it is. There. I was going to say, can we see uh, that sheen? Look how much yeah. it self levels. This is one of the prettiest wow. things. So you can see there's a lot of texture on this thing. This is coming out with a lot of different shapes and you can just see how beautifully shiny it still is. That just goes to show Looks you like how- like glass. Yes, exactly. We've worked really hard. The product <laughs> team that developed this worked really hard to get this this glossy. So here's an example of the three circles. So the cool thing is this is an example of just doing the single infinity, but you can also do this multiple times. So if you want to do your three, you can see here, we did our three, poured a bunch of colors in, then we moved over here, we did our three here, and then we came back over here, and then we swirled our canvas. So you don't even just have to use one. In fact, you could use two at the same time. You know, we use the same one for multiple pieces here, but you can also put multiple on and get all kinds of different effects. This one's really cool and fun. And ultimately, if you don't like the way it looks, you can just wipe it off and start over again. That's the beauty of the uh, folk art drizzle. Okay, there's our strainers. All right. Okay, our next project, this is really fun too. Open pouring cups are one of the biggest trends that we've seen in the pouring community. So a lot of times people will take plastic cups and cut off the bottoms and they'll place them on their canvases. But the problem is those plastic cups are really cheap and flimsy and you can't reuse them afterwards. So what we wanted to come up with was some kind of way to show these beautiful striations and patterns and do that cup. but. Bring it up a notch, okay? So we came up with these sets. We actually have two different sets that are similar. Kate, let me grab um, the other round cups that are in that middle section there of that pan, the middle pan. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so these are our open pouring cups and we've come out with two different shapes. I'll just grab the cups from you. 
And these are awesome because they're two-sided. So we have, thank you, they have a straight edge and they have this, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking like for? Scalloped, yes. Oh, scalloped. Yeah, scalloped edge. And we manufacture them so that they all stay together when you hold them up, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Not really relevant to the pouring, but it's nice if you are but crafting. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, and if you're crafting, you know, it's easy to get things all over the place. So these keep them really organized. But basically, how you use these are you take several. We like to use multiple at a time. You can also do one. You don't have to do all of them. But we're going to show you a project later with the round ones. So these are the round pouring cups. So the same idea, but they're just round. And all you do is put a base layer of your paint down. Then you put your little cups down and then pour into your cups. You do one color at a time for each of them, or you can mix your colors up. And then you gently lift your cups off the canvas. I know you can barely see that motion, but like I said, we're gonna be able to see that when we do our demo in a minute. And this allows the paint to run out. So you get all these beautiful lines. I'm gonna put these aside, stack them back up, kind of fun. And you get all of this paint coming out. So you can see all the different layers of paint that we have there. And when the paint pops out of those little scalloped edges, they make these little rounded sections. So when you build that and build that and build that and then swirl it, you get this really cool eye effect. So pour cups, that's one way to use them. And that's my favorite way because they have this scalloped edge. But like I said, you can also use that smooth straight edge and you can do all kinds of things. I encourage you to look up pouring cup techniques. It's really, really a kind of a cool and fun way of pouring. And you'll find a lot of things out there and you'll have the upper hand because you'll actually have a tool that's made for it and you'll be able to skip a step of cutting your own cups. Diane gave us some ideas for next year's new product showcase, oh, yeah. Dylan. Um, we can make the pouring cups in ovals, hearts, and diamonds. Ooh, I love it. Heart mm -hmm. especially. That's Heart a fun one. Heart would be really one. cute. Yeah, we have other cups in the line. We have a flower cup mm -hmm. and a um, star cup. And those are really cool. They're very different than these, but they give you similar patterns. So the heart is a good idea. Thank mm -hmm. you. We'll cite you in our uh, <laughs> when we do our new product. Okay. We're on to our next tool here. I know we've got a lot, but we're going to get to the crafting, I promise. I know everybody probably wants to see the pouring, but we're going to get there. Um, this is our awesome little flexible paint tray and comb tool set. So we were um, seeing a lot of pan pours all over YouTube and Facebook where people will pour into a regular house dust pan. They'll pour paint into kind of concentric circles, and then they'll pour it out onto their canvas. But there's some limitations there. A, it's really big. Oftentimes, dust pans are really large and hard to work with, and they're rigid. So what we decided was, let's do a really cool small version, and let's make it out of silicone. So A, it doesn't stick to the, the paint. I've used this particular tool many, many times, and you can see it looks just as good as the one we have in the package. So it cleans right out. When your paint is dry, you can just peel it right up or wash it out while it's still wet with soap and water. And we also thought it would be really cool to be able to pinch and control where your paint is going. So that's why we designed this. This one is more for fine details, but you can see we can still do a big canvas. Now, you're probably wondering what made all those funky marks in the corner. Well, we've got mm -hmm. this other part of the tool that we thought was a really unique thing. We've seen a lot of tools on the market, but we haven't seen anything like this. So this is a multi-use squeegee, and this has these little serrations, these little bristles, if you will, of silicone that give you this beautiful combing effect. Now again, if you were to have a really rigid comb, we have those in the line. Those are really cool. They're big plastic rigid combs. Those are really great for larger canvases, but sometimes when you want to be a little more gentle on smaller canvases, this, is, this really comes in handy. So you can do your pour, you can do your pan pour with your little silicone pan, and then you take your comb and then you're able to make these really beautiful discs. And you know, this is something that we see a lot in home decor is these new like half circles and quarter circles. It's really, really popular. So you might be looking at this one saying, that's red and pink and yellow. I probably won't put that in my house. But if you did it with a tan or gold and a brown and a white, I bet you could hang this on your wall with these beautiful little arches and it would probably fall in with all the other um, decor that's really popular right now. So we, uh, one thing I also want to mention, there's a lot of different uses for a straight edge um, 
squeegee, and we're going to talk about that when we talk about our larger size of tools. But this one is really great too, especially if you're trying to clean up. I like to clean the edges of my canvases after I pour them. So this little guy is really, really helpful. And I'm sure you guys can find all kinds of other uses for it. We just want to make a tool that didn't just have one use. So there you go. Okay, there's our silicone pan. All right. I would say this next one is my absolute favorite. So if you are brand new to pouring, this would be the first tool that I would recommend. This is our combing squeeze bottle set. Now these are really, really cool because they kind of do all the work for you. So what we've done here is we've done a dirty pour. I mixed a bunch of our different blues. I did a beautiful dirty pour. And if you're unsure of what a dirty pour is, that's when you pour all of your paint into a single cup it kind of blends together and then you pour it out onto your canvas. So you don't see really different colors there. You can see here, this is one I did with that silicone pan. You can see how those colors are really defined. So you've got a coral color and you've got a yellow color. But then when you do a dirty pour, you've got blues that kind of fall into each other. You've got a light blue here that goes into a dark. And then what we do is fill up our bottle with multiple colors of paint. These are really nice, soft, squeezable plastic. And then they have these cool comb tops that you can see here. I'll show you that closer. Those comb edges are really what do all the work. So the fun thing is to take your bottle, pour a bunch of different colors. I have done our optimistic flash, because you can see some of the iridescence in this one. I did our bright pink. I did the um, lighter navy color. And you just fill up your bottle and then you just squeeze it out and run it across your canvas into your dirty pour. And not only do you get some cool texture, but you also get this beautiful striation where all your colors are kind of blending together, but you get these really cool patterns. I do this pattern a lot just because it's very satisfying and mm -hmm. fun, but you can do all kinds of patterns. We've done it where you just do dots. And you just kind of squirt the bottle out in a line. And I'd love to see what else people can do with it. This is just a really fun one. If you've got some friends that are kind of unsure about paint pouring, this is a great way to start because if you like, um, if you were to do a dirty pour with your drizzle underneath and you really liked it and you didn't want to do anything to it, then you're done. But say if someone didn't like the way their dirty pour turned out, fill up your bottle with some paint, squeeze it onto your canvas in a funky pattern, and I bet they would like it a lot more. So there's a lot of ways to um, kind of rescue projects, and I would say that this one is easy, it's very straightforward, and it's really creative. Okay. Everyone's really excited, Dylan. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. Okay, I think we've reached the end of our new tool show and tells. Now we're going to start crafting with some of the tools. So I'm going to move some stuff out of the way. Jesse, let me know if there's any comments as I'm changing okay. stuff over. While Dylan is uh, moving stuff around over there, I'll tell you again about our sale, just in case you've just joined us. So again, this is our 2023 new product showcase. We are here all week long telling you all about our brand new products that we've launched this year. Today, Dylan is talking about Drizzle. We have some brand new, um, beautiful colors in our Drizzle line, as well as some really fun tools. So while Dylan's getting ready to um, demonstrate some of those tools for us, which is going to be super fun to watch, um, I want you to remember that we have a sale going on online right now. So if you go to plaidonline.com slash new, check out all of our new products. You can receive 30% off of $70 or more. So Make sure to check that out because all the tools and beautiful colors you're seeing here today, now is the perfect chance to snag some of those. Um, I also want to remind you guys, if you're watching, make sure to participate in the chat. We've got lots of great comments and questions, um, but at the end of the session, I'm going to be choosing a name to receive a bundle of our new product that we're talking about this week. So make sure you guys um, participate in the chat. Now's a great time to ask any questions you have about the products because Dylan and I are both here to answer live um, and let you know anything that you've been wondering. So. I think Dylan's ready to do some demos, so I'm going to pass it back over to him. All right, we're ready. We're ready. <laughs> okay, so this is a really exciting tool set, and I'm going to kind of break it down. We've got a lot to do on this project, so I want to show you first the tools themselves. So these are our blower and splatter set. You get both of these tools. This is a really cool blower. Now, if you don't know what a blower is, it's basically a silicone body with a one-way valve, and you've got a little tip here. And we've designed this tip to have really, really direct um, airflow. So you can really push paint around with this and move things. And I'll get to showing you that in just a second. 
But one of the, the coolest things that I, that I added to this collection, we were building these tools and you know, obviously it's called drizzle that kind of brings up the idea of splattering and lots of freeform paint. And one thing I remember from growing up is my mom used to use a tool similar to this um, to splatter all kinds of different stuff, all kinds of different projects. Um, and it gives you a really fine mist of a splatter. So we have a lot of ways to do big splatters, but I didn't see much out there for paint pouring that gave you a really fine mist. So we developed this little splatter guy here. So this is this sturdy little metal handle, and you've got this little turn guy that has a little arm, a little metal arm on it that will strike against these bristles and then your paint flings onto your project. So we're gonna be doing a galaxy painting here and I'm gonna show you how we use the blower and the splatter tool to get this effect. But before we do that, I wanna show you, we're not gonna be using the blower a ton for this. So I wanted to give you um, an idea of what the blower can do on its own. So what I did here on this canvas is I poured it with our um, night sky, our big, our black color, and then I put our neon uh, sunshine, our neon pop, our pink, all kinds of different colors, and then you just blow the paint around. Now this is one of those that you probably want to do in the splash guard because paint does kind of go all over the place, um, but it's really fun. And we've seen a lot of people do like a sunflower pattern with this, or if you want to do a split canvas and pour this, um, and blow your colors into either side. We do a really cool canvas that I don't have here today, but a black and a white, and that we pour this purple into each side, and that's really beautiful. So this is just a really cool tool. It's a great tool to have on hand regardless, because sometimes there are just times when you're doing a paint pour and you need to move some paint without getting your hands in there. This is a great tool to use for that. Speaking of blowing paint around and using the splash guard, Dylan, Diane would like to know where your apron is. Okay, good question, good question. Okay, so that was a toughie today because I made this outfit specifically for this. Um, I'm kind of just going on a whim here. I'm hoping, uh, obviously it's kind of colorful and painty, but um, as you know, as a, probably as a crafter, uh, there's times when you want your stuff to have paint all over it mm -hmm. and other times that you don't. So I wanted you to be able to see my cool outfit today. Um, and I'm just- A little drizzle will make it even better. Right, exactly. I mean, <laughs> it, it would be okay, but um, I'm, I'm just going out on a limb here and hoping that I don't get any paint on me. But <laughs> the great thing is it's washable, it's non-toxic, it's wonderful to use. So um, it would add to my, my shirt for sure. <laughs> But good question, good question. <laughs> okay, so to get started here, I want to talk to you about, um, like I said, we have a, a lot of great existing product in the line, and one of those things is we have several different kits. So this is our Galaxy kit. You can find this on platonline.com slash new. This is one that we came out with originally, and what we tried to do was come up with different kits that had everything you needed to do something. We have a metallic kit, we have an ocean kit, we have a neon kit. So this is just another one of those. This is the Galaxy Kit, and it has all the colors in it that you need to do a Galaxy painting. So we're gonna use these and more. So I wanted this to be here so you can see, this is a really fun way to get into Drizzle because it might be a little intimidating to buy like six colors of our 17 ounce bottles. But what we've tried to do is make sure that you can kind of dip your toes in with these four and a half ounce bottles. You get all of them together so you don't have to do any guesswork. The great thing about Drizzle is that you are able to mix a lot of the different colors in line because they don't muddy, and we've designed the colors to go well together basically in any combination. So these are just kind of pre-decided for you. If you're thinking of gift giving, we're not too far off from the holidays, and you know, a bunch of buying separate bottles might be a little bit... Um, intimidating, like I said, but if you're going to give this to someone as a gift, I would say get one of these kits. Get a kit, get a tool, get one of the new tools, and you're ready to go. And in, in my opinion, if you wanted to do the Galaxy, and you have someone in your life that wants to do some Galaxy painting, get them the Galaxy kit and the blower and splatter set, and you're ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We're going to get started here. So I'm going to use, like I said, we've got the colors in the Galaxy kit. I'm going to put those aside so you can kind of see. I've got the larger bottles. The great thing, too, is all the colors that we have in the kits, we have in the larger sizes as well. So I just need a little bit more paint for today's project. And you can see I've been using all these bottles, so they're not perfect. But I just want you to know that I, I craft with this a lot. It's a wonderful product, and I really do stand behind it. Okay, so we're gonna be using two of the new colors. So I'm going to be using um, one of my flash iridescents. This is that denim flash. And we're gonna be using that mercury metallic. 
And then we're going to use two old favorites. We're going to have our heart of gold. This is the classic metallic gold and cloud surf, that beautiful pearly white. OK. So a galaxy is a galaxy pour is basically a dirty pour. And we're going to use these tools to kind of help us make it look even more like a galaxy. So I've just got a simple 8 by 10 canvas here. And I want to show you a little trick if you haven't um, crafted with us before. One of our favorite things to do is take our canvases. These are regular stretch canvases. And we actually set them up on little push pins. So this keeps them up off of our surface. And so that when we do do our pour, the edges are able to drip off. I can use that silicone tool to clean the edge. And then when it dries, it won't dry stuck down to my surface. So I highly, highly recommend that. And we've got some more products in the works um, that we're going to be coming out with soon here that you don't have to use the push pins, which I'm excited to uh, share with you as soon as we get those going. But for right now, we love using our push pins. We also really like using um, nonstick baking sheets. So this is one, you can see some paint all over it. This is one we use in the studio for a lot of different projects. But these are fantastic because they are nonstick. So any paint that gets on it, they'll dry up and you'll be able to peel it right off. So th that's kind of the basics here. I'm also going to grab a cup and we're going to do a dirty pour and we're just going to jump right in. So the first color we're going to do, we want this to be pretty dark heavy. We don't want it to be um, light because we're doing a galaxy. So we're going to st start with our black. These are really nice giant bottles for big projects. I really like using them. And they go a long way, don't they, They Dylan? do go a long way, yeah. You've been using these exact bottles for a while now. Right. And it's really fun. I mean, they're great bottles. It's great paint coming out of them. We love these projects. And the Galaxy's an easy one to start with. It's something I think a lot of people want to start with, too. I think it's something you see on Pinterest. You see it on TikTok pretty common. So I'm just going to do a little bit of our extra color. And you can just see I'm just pouring paint in. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just pouring paint in my cup. You can see it's mostly black, which is what I want. And then we're just adding a little bit of our other colors in. For an 8x10, I'm probably going to fill this up about halfway. And then we're going to start adding our new colors. So we're going to add our denim flash. Really quick, we have a question from Susan. Okay. Um, do you need to shake the paint bottles? No, that's a great question. Um, drizzle is really formulated to keep the bubbles down, and they rarely separate. If they do, what we recommend is that you just roll it on the table, mm -hmm. just like that. But you can see these have been hanging around a really long time. You don't see any separation. The paint is all nice in there, nice and combined. So a good question, but you shouldn't have to run across that very often. Okay, I think that's about it. I'll add a little bit more of my black, maybe a little bit more of my blue. Okay, now I'm going to move my bottles off. I don't want them to get all messy. And we're going to be coming back to these two colors here. I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay, and now it's as simple as pouring on. I think this is a really scary step for some people, but it really is as simple as pour that paint on. And you know what? If it's looking a little funky, we can always pour a little more. So again, no rhyme or reason. And now we're just going to swirl. I'm not really looking for anything in particular. I, I do like this. This is pretty cool. <laughs> it's looking great. See, and the great thing is you can stop here, you know? <laughs> like right, if you like, like look, the way this looks. Look how it flows, you guys. Can you see how quickly and smoothly it's gliding across the canvas? And look how beautiful. It's just so satisfying, that glassy yeah, surface. Yeah, it's so quick. This is exactly how I wanted it to turn out. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fun thing. Like, you know, again, we say it all the time. It's kind of corny. There's no rules. But, I mean, that really is true. Like, if you don't like your product, your end product, you just... Pour it over, add some more paint. It's really hard to mess up. Use the combing up. tool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then if there are any bubbles, a lot of times if we're pouring paint into a tool or into a cup, when you pour that paint, you do mix in bubbles just because that's how it happens. Um, but we're not really worried about that. You can just tap your canvas and get rid of any little bubbles. And then I've just got some baby wipes here. This is non-toxic and water-based, but for the sake of today's live stream, I'm just, I have gloves on, 
not because I'm worried about it staining or staying on my hands, but just because I want to be able to switch between projects. Mm -hmm. So just know it, you can definitely do this without gloves on. I just don't like to get that messy. It is kind of fun sometimes to get that messy, especially with like the blasters or something like that. Really quick, we have another question. Um, Susan would like to know how long does it take to dry? That's a good question. That really depends on where you are. So where you are, what your humidity is. We like to say that um, patience is a virtue. It's always a big thing. <laughs> and we like to wait about a week. That's a general time of like, you can go from wet canvas to hanging on the wall in a week. So you don't have to wait that long. Oftentimes, if you're in a more uh, dry climate, you're able to get this up a lot sooner. But why rush it? You know, when you mm -hmm. have a really pretty project, you don't want to rush this. And um, there's a few things that I found that work really well to keep them to get them drying a lot faster. Uh, one of those things is to um, put them in the sun. I like to have them on a sunny windowsill, and that really seems to help uh, evaporate that water out of the paint. And you can do a lot of different things. I would not put them in front of a fan or a hair dryer or anything like that. Okay, there is our project, we're done. And now I am going to kind of mix things up here. We're going to grab our blower. We're gonna do a little bit <laughs> Madeline said, a week in Florida is a month. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, Madeline, but you're right. It also depends on how much paint you have on your canvas yeah. while Dylan's using that blower tool. Um, in my experience, if you're using one of these tools that involves a lot more paint, it will take about a week to dry. But if you're just kind of doing a quick dirty pour or even clean pour, and you're getting that paint really thin and really um, moving it around and spreading it, it can dry in just a couple of days. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely safe to wait longer. It's just hard to say, you know, we always go with longer because we don't want you to ruin your project. Right. Like, this is so glossy that sometimes when you pick them up, you might think, oh, it's dry. No, still wet. Yeah. So <laughs> and it even really depends careful. on the time of year here. Yeah. Okay, I want to show you a close up really quick. There is what the blower did. You can see it just kind of moves the paint around. This is a really subtle way, but you can also do it really, really um, strong and get that paint to really fly across the canvas. But for today's example, that's not the technique that I'm going for. Okay, now we're going to use our splatter. So I'm gonna grab my gold, and we're gonna put a little bit of our gold and a little bit of our cloud surf down. And now we've gotta add our stars. It's not a galaxy without some stars. So this is as simple as brush some paint into those little bristles. And then, it's kinda of hard, you wanna find your direction. Okay, you just wanna make sure you know what direction your paint is flinging in. And then we're going to just basically fling our paint around. <laughs> it's probably hard to see, but I'm going to bring it up close to the camera. You can see the spots, but it almost looks like it's not even moving. It's kind of cool to watch. Yeah. You can build it up. This is, you know, something you want to do sparingly. You don't want to do too much. And I'm just trying to do it. Think about how a galaxy would probably look. There's probably a lot of things that, you know, in our universe that would look like this. But you want to kind of keep the... the I like to keep the stars that we're making in kind of heavily concentrated in the black area. And then we can kind of pretend that this is some kind of planet or some kind of nebula. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold this up so you can see those beautiful little splatters. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That looks great, Nolan. Yeah, so we've got like a planetary system here and a bunch of stars. It looks just like a galaxy. Yeah, and look how easy that was. Yeah. A little pour and we're done, okay. We're gonna move on to our next project here. So that's our blower and splatter set. I love that, Dylan. And Dylan is making it look easy, but that truly is because it is just so easy to do. Um, it's so quick and so satisfying. And with these tools and these paints, you can make something really similar at home. It doesn't take a whole lot of practice. You know, there's definitely like a learning curve when you first get started, but regardless of what ends up on your canvas, it's always gonna be beautiful if you're using drizzle. Yeah. That's one of the best parts of this uh, line of paint, in my opinion. Um, Susan said they saw a meteor shower last weekend. It reminds her of that. Oh, heck yeah. Um, Barb said, that is so cool. I need that. Joe said, that's very pretty. Everybody's super excited. They're telling us about their climates as well. Oh, I love that. <laughs> How it would dry in their area. Thank you. See, people know. Like, <laughs> generally, you know where you are, you know. Florida, not so good. North Dakota, good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, <laughs> but that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for commenting. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're ready to move on to our next one here. So I was talking about these earlier. These are our circle pour cups that also come in the squares. And we are going to do the circle pour canvas. So when I do this technique, most of the time, I do a base coat. So... That just means we're gonna flood our canvas with paint. 
By the way, I just want to highlight that I did that so quickly. <laughs> it's very simple to do. That Galaxy is done. And yes, yep. I've been doing it a while, but like Jesse said, very simple. Mm -hmm. And you can get a good result basically every single painting. So it yep. doesn't matter who's doing it. It's a great family activity if you've got a bunch of friends over. Um, we're towards the end of the summer. A lot of people are going back to school. But if you're not and you've got a little bit more time or if you're in college and you have a different schedule, there's still time to get some new drizzle. Yeah. Okay, so I am just putting a base coat of paint down. And that's just flooding our canvas. And then I'm taking a little tongue depressor here and spreading it. We sell this in our great pack of tools. So um, these are kind of bonus in our starter tool set. So if you are new to the program and you want to try kind of a little bit of everything, the starter tool set is great. It comes with a bunch of these, um, our combs, and just some really good tools to get started. Um, people are saying about the, the fine splattering, Dylan, that um, they do do splattering in their painting and they usually use a toothbrush and they're not happy with it. So they're uh, really yeah. excited for the splatter tool. This is really controllable. You know, mm -hmm. like I know we've probably got a lot of people from our Let's Paint group watching today or that yep. will watch. We sure do. And that is, <laughs> those, both of those tools are really cool to use for that. Definitely. Okay. So here are our pouring circles. I, there's no rhyme or reason to this. We're going to put some everywhere. Boom, done. And then we're going to cycle through our colors. So I'm going to use our dark navy. And what I like to do is pour in a nice circle. When you're using the square, you kind of want to pour in a square shape. That doesn't 100% matter, but it's just, maybe it's me just being a little OCD. I just want it to all be looking <laughs> perfect. They There's do no work. rules, Dylan. Say what? No rules. no rules. No rules. There's no rules. <laughs> Let color flow. And we're going to use our beautiful neon limeade. Joyce said, yep, let's paint. <laughs> we love it. See, this is a different way to paint. That yeah, we definitely. Visited, you guys need to try this out. Yeah, we visited the Let's Paint group before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some people have seen our Lunch and Learns with Andy and Chris Williams, um, where we've actually shared some of the new drizzle stuff. So if definitely. you haven't joined our Let's Paint community and you're new to crafting or painting, that is a great place to foster some of your creativity. Obviously, you've made it here to Plaid Crafts. So mosey on over to our Facebook group. This is our page, but we also have that wonderful group. We have a really good question from Brenda. Okay. Um, and I'm really glad she asked it. Speaking of our Let's Paint group, she asked if you can paint on top of drizzle with folk art acrylics. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you can. Andy has done that a few times. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Chris has done it on camera, but she definitely has done it. We have done several different kinds of paintings. Mm -hmm. I think Jesse might have even done something. Yeah, I poured a couple drizzle canvases and Andy painted some beautiful florals on top of it. And mm -hmm. just like the contrast of the really loose poured background with Andy's beautiful um, realistic florals, it is so fun and so fun to watch. So yeah. we have some um, videos on Instagram, I want to say, where Andy's done that. Mm -hmm. So make sure to go check those out. And it they're so great. glossy, you know, mm -hmm. that they, it's easy to paint on. Okay, we're using one of our new flash iridescent colors. So I want to make sure you guys see this wave, um, tidal wave flash. It looks like bubbles. Yeah. So I like to get these about halfway filled and then we start letting that paint out. Okay. Now we're going to do the fun part. So you see that we've got a lot of paint in there. If I were to just lift these up, you'd probably get somewhat of a design, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for some paint to seep out under the edges and then blend into our background. So I'm just going to kind of do some slight lifting motions. Okay, and you see that coming around the edges? I'll do the one in the center. You probably will see that one the best. It's just lifting yep. and releasing. You can definitely see it. You want to make sure you're on a level surface. I know that sounds goofy, but it mm -hmm. definitely changes you'll, you'll things. You'll know if you're not. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be super careful. And this just starts coming right out. We'll do a few more colors. I'm probably not going to finish this one just because I know we're getting up to time here. But you'll see how beautiful this design is. And you can definitely see how we get to that example. And now I'm running out of paint here, so I'm just going to switch colors, and that's fine. You really don't have to do this in any particular order. And like I said, there are amazing paint pouring artists on YouTube and Facebook that can 
basically show you how to use these tools in all kinds of different crazy ways. I encourage you to check them out. We've done a lot of different techniques here you can find on our socials, but I want you to you know, kind of open yourself up to the community because that's where the inspiration is. We try to provide the tools for that inspiration. That's our goal. We had someone earlier comment, Dylan, that they're new to the painting community, but now they feel like they need to join the paint pouring community. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Come on in. It's a fun place to be. A little bit more paint here, and then we're going to take these off, and I'm going to swirl them around. Now this technique does use a lot of paint. So Jesse was saying earlier, you know, thicker painting techniques will take a little bit longer to dry. This is one of those. Um, Diane just made a comment that's a really good point. So um, she said she sees now why you put down such a heavy base coat um, because it plugs the holes and it keeps mm -hmm. the paint from pouring out right away. Right. So that's exactly right, Diane. That's exactly why he did that. Now there are techniques where you can just you know, pour right on top, but this just gives you that blend that you wouldn't get. Okay, so you can see we've got some funky eye shapes going on, and I'm gonna show you there's a little bit of a trick to getting these up. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lift it up and then you're gonna kinda feel the walls of the, the bubble of paint and they're gonna kinda burst, and then you get it off immediately. I don't wanna just lift it right off because then that'll make the paint burst all over and kinda ruin our design. So I'm gonna lift up, boop, done. Boop. <laughs> boop. I'll show you one where you just lift it right up. Boop, there it goes. <laughs> so there you go, you see why I don't do that. <laughs> But if you're nice and patient, you get these beautiful concentric circles. Okay, now that's the fun part, where we're gonna move these little crazy eyes around. This one, you don't wanna swirl too much because this is all about that pattern that these give you. So that's it, boom. That I feel like great. the rainbow art lady. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my God, oh gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Everybody loved that one, Dylan. So oh, relaxing. Awesome. It looks great. Wow. How fun is that? So that was awesome. a great demonstration. Okay. We've got one more for you while Caitlin's doing that. Let us know if you have any questions mm -hmm. about any of the Drizzle projects or product. Barb said that one was very 60s, which I love. It kind is of very a retro mod. vibe. Yeah. Very cool. Um, again, guys, I know I keep saying it. I just want to remind you we're having a great sale on platonline.com slash new. Or if you purchase seventy dollars or more of all of these brand new products, including these great new drizzle colors and tools, you get thirty percent off. So please make sure to check that out. Now's a really great time to snag some of these um, awesome new products that Dylan is demonstrating for us today. Yeah, and then you can see right now I didn't do my push pins on this canvas yet, so I'm putting my push pins mm -hmm. in the back. You can see how easy it is to just put these guys right in. Yep, it's a great way to keep your canvas up off of the surface, so and you can reuse them. Pool. Okay, this is our last project that I'm going to talk you through. Now, this is a cool tool. This is um, our pouring pan. This is the flat pouring pan. Like I said earlier, we've seen a lot of people using household dust pans, and those just don't cut it, <laughs> okay? So what we've done is we've designed one with a canvas in mind, which, um, you know, your home stores have not. They've designed it to clean. So <laughs> what we did was we built in a few different cool features. So. Um, this is the perfect width for an 8x10 canvas, but it also adds a great, um, it's a perfect size for really any size canvas to do different sizes. But if you want to do a full pour right onto an 8x10 canvas, that's what this is for. We also, you might see this right here, it looks just kind of like there's a handle, but boop, we've got a little squeegee <laughs> built into the handle. So that's kind of a useful tool. And I want to show you that. I don't have a demo for you on the squeegee, but I do have these projects. So. When you are doing paint pouring, you'll see a lot of people use silicone as an additive to your paint, and it gives you these beautiful cells. But for certain techniques, your, um, your paint doesn't just make cells on its own. You actually have to move the paint into each other to make those cells. So this squeegee is really good for that. So when you would do your pour, you've got your silicone mix, mixed into your paint, then you take your squeegee and run it really gently across the surface, and then all those cells start to form got another example here. I love that heart canvas so much. Yeah. So you can see all those little holes peeking through. These colors are pretty bright, but you can see those cool little patterns that you form. Okay, so the pan pour is really pretty simple. 
we're going to grab all of our colors. We're going to start with one of our newer colors. This one is our candy apple flash, that beautiful red. And this is kind of a similar technique as pouring into the cups, but we're just going to pour into our pan here. So I'm just going to make, I'm going to, you can do this technique with a single circle and you just keep pouring into it, but I'm going to do a few different ones to give this look. So you see we have a few different little um, pours here. The base color was this coral and then we poured right on top of it. So we're going to do something kind of like that. We're going to do one circle over here, a little one over here, and maybe one right there. And then we're just going to pour right into those circles. And then I think I'm going to add another. You just want to be careful so that it doesn't roll all the way out the front of your pan. You can kind of gently lift it backwards or tilt it backwards and avoid that. So you can see we've got a really cool pattern going. Very simple, straightforward. We're just going to keep pouring these little circles until we have enough paint. Madeline said this presentation is phenomenal. Mind blown. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> All we did was pour paint on a canvas. I like that. <laughs> simple. Simple to please. We love that. I mean, that's really it. Like, this is really simple, but you need the right tools to make it work. The right, the right paint and the right tools make all the difference. So if you were to try this on your own, you know, when we started pouring, it is really hard to figure out how they're doing it. You know, you think if you are new to the art community, it just looks like they've got paint and they're pouring it and they're moving it. But like I said earlier, if you try to just pour out some paint, it's not gonna look like that. So what we've done is formulated this paint to be perfect for this technique, and then we've added the tools to help support it. So you're right. It is a really cool, mind-blowing technique. OK, we've got a lot of paint in our pan. And I'm going to show you, typically, I would do two to three passes on a canvas to fill it up. But this is kind of fun. This is, I see this a lot on viral videos, so get ready for that. It's kind of cool. We're just going to pour and drag. And you basically transfer your pattern. So whoever was talking about it being kind of 60s mod, this is right up your alley. Mm, I was thinking the same thing. OK. So you can see we've got our pan. Our pan transferred our design like perfectly. And then you can move this around. OK, so there's one stripe. Well, let's fill it up again here before our time is up. And this, you don't have to be careful. You can just go right back in. Add more of our candy apple flash, that beautiful red iridescent. Doesn't have to be perfect. That looks so cool, Dylan. Yeah. I want that as a dress. All right. I can do that. <laughs> Thanks. Let's do it. You know, I didn't think about that. You know, like if you are a graphic designer, it's hard to find textures out there. Mm -hmm. Pouring art would be a really cool way to make those textures for fonts. Absolutely. Okay. And then let's do this. Let's go across like this. Get a little bit there. You don't have to do it all in one. We're getting a lot of dress orders in the comments, Dylan. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, Platt. Got to go. <laughs> OK. And then let's swirl this puppy around. See, this is like a baked in design. Boom, done. Mm. And look at all the different patterns and textures you get without really any thought put into it. This just happened. <laughs> and then any of these areas that you have no paint covering, it's so good at flowing that you can just dip your fingers in it and then go right around it. And the paint will just naturally flow right to it. Look how easy. I feel like the rainbow lady again. Ah, so good. <laughs> ah. OK. I think that about wraps it up. So thank you guys for um, letting me demonstrate for you. Uh, this has been a super fun demo because we had a lot to show. Sorry it went a little bit long. Um, but we hope that you try out some of these new drizzle tools. 
And remember that sale is 30% off $70 or more. And Jesse is going to pick a winner in our comment mm -hmm. section to win some of this awesome new product. So I'll pass it back over to her. Awesome, thanks Dylan. Uh, wow, that was such a great demo. Everybody loved watching you demonstrate all of our brand new drizzle tools, all of the new glitters and um, flash iridescent colors. That was so much fun to watch. So again, guys, don't forget we're having a sale right now. If you go to plaidonline.com slash new, check out all of the new product we've been talking about this week. You can purchase um, $70 or more worth of product and then get 30% off. So that's an awesome discount. The kits we've talked about, the new folk art formulas, all these new drizzle tools. So make sure to go check out the sale. <clears throat> I am going to um, pick a winner from the comments, but first I want to remind you we're here all week. So we are just about halfway through with our new product showcase. Um, we've been talking about folk art all week and tomorrow we're going to be talking about Mod Podge. So another fan favorite, we've got a ton of new Mod Podge formulas that we released this year that are really fun and really special to share with you. We're also going to be talking about Bucilla Soft Craft. So if you're a stocking stitcher or you like to do any kind of stitching, make sure to check that out because Kira will be back here in the studio sharing all of the new designs that we have for you this year. And then Friday, we're going to be talking all about Apple Barrel. So you don't want to miss that either. We've got some paint pens and some more pouring that we'll be doing on Friday. And then also all of our wood um, shapes and surfaces. So make sure to check that out because Every year we release dozens and dozens and dozens of wood surfaces. So especially our Let's Paint community, they're great things to paint on. Make sure to join us on Friday for that. Um, so the winner for today's session, who's going to win a bundle of our brand new product that we've discussed this week, um, is K Noir Designs. So um, Khadija, I think is your name. Thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure to send Plaid a direct message on Facebook and let us know you're the winner so we can get you um, some product in the mail um, and get all of your contact information and stuff like that. So again, guys, we're going to be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. and we'll see you then. Bye.